Greetings, Preacher John. I'm trying to try something different here. Preacher John here in Boulder, Colorado, trying something different uh, with this uh, earpiece here. I don't know if that's going to work either on this wind uh, because it's really windy today. I'm the sixth in Canyon here in Boulder, and uh, you can see my banner is laying up on the wall there. And across the street is the Boulder County Justice Center in the mountains. And uh, this is the uh, first light when you come uh, into Boulder out of the west on Highway 119. Uh, the next city up 119 here is Nederland. That's where I was at last Friday. Next Friday I'll be in Longmont. That's the fourth Friday of the month. First Friday I'm in Denver, second Friday I'm in Golden, third Friday in Nederland, fourth Friday in Longmont. Every month there's a fifth Friday I travel to the ends of the state, or the state lines rather. Uh, the first January had the first fifth Friday. I was in Grand Junction. The next fifth Friday will be the end of April. I'll be in Fort Collins. The next one I'll be in Burlington on the Kansas line. And the last fifth Friday will be in Trinidad on the New Mexico border. So that's the state lines at total of nine cities including Boulder and a total of 33 corners 25 in the city of Boulder four around the city just outside the city of Boulder and four on the state line totaling 33 corners and I've been to all the corners uh, I'm in my second go around on the state lines uh, because I just started this uh, 21 months ago so uh, but we've been, been to Grand Junction twice now so Fort Collins will be the second time, Burlington will be the second time, and Trinidad will be the second time. And I prayed this is working. I did look up some kind of wind type of microphone that I can use, but man, they're like a hundred bucks when you look at the microphone and the wind deflector thing that goes on it. Uh, $95 plus uh, shipping and tax. But, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyways, I don't know. <laughs> I'm tired, man. I don't know. This wind just pushes me around so fiercely. And, uh, you know, when you're standing in the wind, even when you don't have a banner, uh, it's really, uh, it pushes you around. And you got to stay alert. You got to keep moving. You got to keep looking. I'm right here by the bike path. Right down here, down this way, is the downtown portion of, of Boulder, the Pearl Creek, uh, Pearl Creek, uh, Pearl Street Mall. And then one block up here is the uh, famous Pearl Street uh, entrance. And uh, right up this street here, 6th Street, is uh, the uh, you know the uh, western side of the college and all the homes that are up there that are really pretty. And uh, if you ever come to Boulder, make sure you drive around town. It's a pretty historic town. It's been uh, here a long, long time. And... Uh, Apparently, it's attracted money all the time. I mean, ever since it got started, it's been attracting uh, wealth. And even today, uh, people of high means come to Boulder for whatever reason. Why they come, I haven't got a clue. The reason I'm here is because, number one, God called me to Boulder. God called me the state of Colorado to the city of Boulder to build him a church. But the reasons I've come here is solely for ministry and solely to, as a missionary. And uh, Boulder's not what it was 30 years ago. I started coming here to Boulder in 1975, 1st of April of 75, maybe the last day or two of March. Still can't quite figure that out. I got out of the military on March 26th, drove across the country and stopped in Boulder. I was going to go to school here. But, uh, you know... Girlfriend got in the way, <laughs> took the place of God. And here I am preaching, and you know, Satan puts a woman in your path. Yeah, like I've lived through everything you guys are going through, I've done it too. But uh, fortunately, now in this part of my season of my life, uh, I'm able to uh, kind of go around all that stuff for some reason because uh, it doesn't matter to me anymore. Uh, life is different, and I wish I had this mindset. Wow, the swim. I hope I can, this is coming through. I wish I had this mindset way back when, but I didn't, and uh, I do now. 
but you can see there's lots of cars coming down, a lot of road construction up the way there, and uh, man oh man. <laughs> I'm sorry about this wind. I may just cut it off here, but I've been studying a lot of the scriptures today. The reason I'm late is after 3 o'clock, 3 to 5 I'm going to do it because uh, I've just been taking care of too much church business, trying to get a lot of the legal stuff taken care of, a lot of stuff that's behind the scenes that you can't uh, do otherwise. And it just kind of wears on me because it's tedious stuff that I'm not very good at. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a truck driver. I'm not a, I'm not an administrator. I'm not a paper pusher. You know, I'm not a guy who sits at the desk. I'm a guy out in the street. I'm a guy on the highway. Uh, not a guy in the office. And so when you have to do office work, it, uh, it's uh, time consuming because it's frustrating because you don't know exactly how to do everything. It doesn't sm flow smoothly because it's foreign to your you know physical makeup but I got it all done and uh, got some appointments set for the church business and it, it's all gonna work out you know, sooner or later <laughs> yeah. but I'm still a one-man band here I got a lot of people who are praying for the ministry I know that and I got a lot of people supporting the ministry but physically out preaching I'm still uh, the number one guy out here uh, well not number one but uh, the main guy, I guess. Probably always will be the main guy because that's just the way it is, you know. The guy who starts it usually always is the number one guy. He's always putting in more time than anybody else. And uh, that's normal. Uh, I wish it wasn't normal, but it is normal. Uh, you look at any kind of uh, statistics and it's just normal. The number one, the first to market is always 10, 20, 30, 100 times bigger than anything else. You know, Google statistics on first to market. You're gonna be, you'll be totally surprised at the uh, what number one is versus number two, three, and four. It's it's just staggering uh, the first to market. So in a sense, for this church, preacher John is uh, first to market. I guess you could say. So therefore, uh, that, I'm gonna have more hours, more time, more stuff going on because you know, you know, I was the first to the gate. I guess you know. I mean. First out of the gate, running the hardest, running the fastest, uh, you stay in the lead, you know. But if you don't keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jesus Christ, if you don't keep your eyes on the prize of Christ, prize of Christ, <laughs> I kind of like that, uh, you're going you're gonna to fall, you're going to stumble because Satan is trying to put sticks and branches and rocks in front of you, stumbling stuff. And uh, I, I know on the other side of the finch, Jesus is the stumbling block, but in our path, Jesus isn't our stumbling block. It's all the devils who throw stuff in our way. It's all of our thoughts. You know, capture this last night about two in the morning. The Lord woke me up and said, "Take control of your thoughts." Whoa! I mean, I just was blown away by that. I just, I, I just was wide awake. I got out of bed and I just stood there and said, "Take control of your thoughts." And I'm going, "What was I thinking?" I mean, I just like I checked the clock. It's like two o five or two o eight, something like that. It's two o something. And I, I was so clear, take control of your thoughts. Wow, here I am, sound asleep. I've been sleeping for four or five hours, you know, and 10, 11, 10, 11, 12, one, two, yeah, four hours. And uh, he told me, take control of my thoughts. Woke me up, you know. I praise God that I've allowed God. I said, God, wake me up, get me out of bed. Don't let me sleep if you don't want me to. Do whatever it is, I am at your everything you want my will is your will I want to do what you want me to do and uh, you know if we push too hard uh, then we start pushing against the Holy Ghost and then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost steps aside and we jump right around them because we're pushing too hard so it's a real uh, odd mix of trying to work with the Holy Ghost follow the Holy Ghost and uh, stay you know right right behind them all the time uh, because you want to put the armor of light on the armor of light is the spirit of God and uh, when you put that armor on you got to stay in that light and you can't move out of that light because once you move out of that light you move into the darkness and that's what a lot of uh, believers and preachers and ministers that you know we get moving fast because we have a call on our life we have an anointing we have something to do and uh, uh, a lot of times we, we, get, we click into our physical abilities and we push past that light. And when we push past that light, you know, we stumble, we make mistakes. That's why we have to repent and come back and 
you know, talk to God again and get back in that light, get back in that step with the Lord and move on. And, you know, maybe last night at 2 in the morning, 2.05 or 2.08 this morning, I was pushing ahead. I don't know, because <laughs> I was thinking about the church, thinking about the ministry. And the, one of the reasons I was thinking about it is uh, on YouTube, I have begun to collect mockers now and people who hate on me and people who are trying to correct me and people who are trying to tell me that I'm all wrong. You know, I'm just waiting for that to come. It wouldn't, I knew it wouldn't be too long, but here are only 20 subscribers and, you know, you know a few hundred views, and I'm already collecting uh, those mockers. So praise God. Uh, now I know that what I'm doing on YouTube is working. <laughs> it's working, you know? If there was no mockers like it used to be, you know, 10 years ago when I was on YouTube, or uh, 10 years, uh, I don't know, something like that. Since 2008, 2009, since I'm 11, I can't remember exactly when I got, but I never collected any mockers. You know, uh, I used to talk about the Lord. I had probably 100 videos on, on Jesus, but I never preached. I just would talk about the Lord, and I never collected anybody. But now that I'm out here street preaching, uh, I'm collecting all these uh, people who think uh, uh, they need to fix me. <laughs> they need to fix me. <laughs> you know, uh, they call, they actually they need to neuter me is what they want to do. You know, they want to, you know, you know, the Bible says they can cut your head off, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, that's not here yet, but it may be. But I'm going to be serving the Lord, and I'm going to be doing what uh, uh, Martin Luther did, you know. Uh, praise God for that. So, uh, God bless you, man. I love you. Thank you for praying for this ministry. I just thank you for, I thank you for staying in the Word of God. I thank you for uh, uh, doing whatever you do in the ministry. If it's just at home. Or in bed, if you're bedridden, pray for us. They're out here on the street. If you can't get out of your home, pray for us. You know, send a donation, send a buck to all the different ministries. You know, create a list of different ministries and preachers who are actually preaching on the front line. Donate a dollar to all of us. I mean, that just uh, that would just so encourage so many of us out here because uh, you know loneliness. Uh, and the oppression from the enemy is great. And the part of our enemy for street preachers is the church itself. Uh, it's, I know that's strange. Uh, that's why I don't put down churches. I know sometimes it sounds like I do. But, uh, you know, I really don't. Uh, their calling is different than my calling. And we all have to be faithful to our calling. So if you're called to uh, pray for a ministry, uh, pray for it. If you're called to uh, donate a dollar, donate a dollar. If you're called to come out and preach, come out and preach. If you're called to, to stand for your city, you know, pray where God wants you to stand and stand for your city. You know, figure out what God wants you to do and then go do that calling. That's your happy place. You know, people are saying you want to be happy. Well, that's how you be happy. You find out what God wants you to do, you go do that, and you're happy. <laughs> All right, and there's my shadow right there doing a video. Praise God. <laughs> God bless you, man. Talk to you later. I love you, man. I love you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.